Hi, I'm Dave, the RPA guy, and welcome to another episode of Let's Build. I want to give you a quick intro into what we're building. I've already built at least the first iteration of this process automation that you'll be seeing coming up in this video. It's going to span across a number of videos. I haven't yet determined how many I'll split it up into. Uh, but what I didn't want to do is give you, you know, two hours of video to watch all at once. But what I'm going to show you right up front here is uh, we're going to run the process automation that I've already built. And again, I should mention this is the first iteration. So you'll see some things that you'd, you'd think like, oh, we should probably change that. But uh, we're going to come back hopefully and do another a second iteration to update that process automation. So let me point out what is going to happen. The bot is going to open Facebook and go to Dave the RPA guy's page, uh, which actually only exists for the purposes of these videos. Maybe I'll actually put some content on it later, but um, what I wanted to do was uh, build a process automation that goes to a website and watches for a certain word or a certain set of text and then notify a user periodically whenever that value changes. And so in this example, I'm choosing a specific word in a specific place on a page. I might update the process automation to um, not go to a specific place in the future. Maybe it'll just look for that word somewhere on the page. But for now, it has to exist in this specific place. You should see nothing except reloading of the page when that value doesn't change. When the bot reloads the page and the value changes, uh, we should see an email come in over here uh, in my inbox for uh, Dave the RPA guy at gmail.com. All right, so we're about to start the process. It's going to ask me for a few inputs. Whenever I start selection, send me an email, and I'll have it uh, refresh the page every five seconds. Let's bring that over here. Okay, so it should, it'll see that it says send me an email. It shouldn't send me one. I'm going to change the value off screen here to say Georgia on my mind. So I'm changing the value on the Facebook page. So now it's reloading. It says Georgia on my mind. The bot should see that it's different. Send me an email saying, hey, I saw a new value. So it says, hello, your watched web value has changed. The URL you provided is this. And the original value that you wanted me to watch is send me an email. The value has changed to Georgia on my mind. So imagine the situation that you wanted this was you, know, you wanted to know when Dave the RPA guy starts to take this seriously. Now you feel like he's, he's still not taking it seriously because he's saying Georgia on my mind. But once he has a real mission statement, then I'm going to go back to his page. But until then, I just want emails whenever he changes that field. So that's what our process automation is at this point. What you're going to see next is what is me starting out building that process automation, going through the steps of creating an object and then the process and then updating each of those as I go along to make them better. You'll see that I run into a few errors now and then and you'll see how I solve them. I thought about removing those sections of the video because it just makes the time longer. But I thought that there may be some of you whose purpose is you want to see how an RPA developer um, who is experienced in Blue Prism would handle some of these automations. So when you run into a problem, what kind of troubleshooting do you do? Um, uh, what steps do you go through to solve the problem? So you'll see that I'll, I'll run into a problem using MappyX at one point. A lot of the steps that I go through for solving the problem with MappyX and, and troubleshooting some of the issues, I will go ahead and leave off screen. Uh, but then a, a number of them, I went ahead and left them in the video because I find that might be helpful. Uh, it always frustrates me when I'm watching a tutorial or a, a let's build or a let's play from someone else. I'm trying to follow what they were doing and they don't, they don't bring me through all the steps they actually took. And so I have to make these logical guesses about what they did next. So I'm trying my best to keep all of those steps in the video and I may uh, skip over something and then summarize it for you. Well, that's what I have for you for this automation preview of the series monitor of value. And so this has been part one, and I encourage you to go ahead and click on the link that should be floating on your screen right now for part two. And uh, before you move on to that video, please like this video, comment if you have anything to, to add to the video, or you want to just give me a shout out, and also subscribe if you haven't already.